Hello and welcome to the audiobook of Faith in Christ, the Introduction by Father Mata El Mesquin. There are two interrelated realities incarnate in the person of Christ, the reality of God and the reality of man. Without Christ, the reality of God remains infinitely remote from man's perception and from his senses and inner life, so that God remains isolated and distant, cut off from our being. We can then only glorify and magnify him by concentrating on an image of him as one remote and isolated, enclosed in himself and totally separate from our earth-bound, sin-stained being. Similarly, the truth of man without Christ falls into one of two pits. The first is the pit of triviality in which man is seen simply as an earthly creation that has lost its ability to maintain its immortal existence. Man is unable to fulfill this higher spiritual destiny, prevented by death from obtaining immortality, and deprived by sin of his most precious possession, which is his spiritual freedom. So man lives simply to eat, reproduce, and die and spiritual things can be no more than the phantasmal object of his longings. The second pit is the pit of vainglory, in which man discovers his own immortality and clings to it, thus divinizing himself apart from God. He sees the origin of his existence in his own self, disregarding the insignificance of his transient, earthly makeup, blinded to the factor of sin, which makes him unaware that he is the slave of his instincts and the prisoner of death and corruption. In order to understand the glory of faith in the mystery of Christ, in whom the reality of God and the reality of man are bound together, we must first ask, what is man's purpose in life? And what is the object of his life and existence? We must reject with confident assurance the idea that the purpose of man's existence is simply that he should be alive, for this means that there is no difference between man and any animal. This does not blend at all with the reality of man who senses within himself that he is the master of the visible creation and has been given authority over it all, and has indeed subjected it to his will. Likewise, no matter how much man achieves to make his life more secure, he still demands something beyond his own life and existence. It is therefore clear that the destiny of man cannot be limited simply to his life or existence. It must consequently go beyond his self to include something else, or rather another self, immeasurably greater than his own, a self for whose sake he was originally created, in which his existence will come to an end and his life be perfected, a self in which the supreme destiny he lives for must inevitably be fulfilled and in which he will attain ultimate happiness. God created man in his own image so that man should bear witness in himself to God's self, or in other words, so that he should realize by his own existence the existence of another and that his life and actions and genius should be practical evidence of the glory of God. If man senses this and believes it and orientates himself towards it, he immediately enters into a state of harmony with God and consequently harmony with himself. He senses that he is living towards the fulfillment of the supreme aim of his life and existence, which is to bear witness to God and to glorify him in all his works and with all his being. Indeed, man may enter into this experience and through it acquire the sure knowledge that man's whole happiness depends on the extent to which he is able to glorify God in his life, which is the high calling for which he was created. There is therefore an intrinsic and reciprocal relationship between God and man. This relationship remained obscure and hidden in the darkness of man's ignorance until it was suddenly shown clearly in history when it was revealed in the supreme light of the perfect example of the person of Jesus Christ. Then began the era of man's true knowledge and enlightenment, when man discovered for the first time the intrinsic relationship in which he is bound to God, as it was revealed in Jesus Christ. 
It is in the light of this relationship and this relationship alone that man can perceive the reality of God and of himself and the supreme purpose of his existence and find in that purpose a source of inexhaustible happiness. The relationship that binds God to man cannot be correctly understood or attained to any extent at all unless we refer to its perfect expression in Christ. In the life of Christ, God, or divinity, appears as a perfectly visible reality, taking the form of a great sacrificial love, a purity free of all weakness and a supreme spiritual holiness, all directed towards man. In the life of Christ, too, man or humanity appears as a reality, by nature humble, which, through its humanity and submission to God, is transfigured and raised from dust to heaven, at first in harmony and then in union with the divine. That is to say that in Christ, humanity is shown in its ideal relationship with God so that we see in Christ all the glory of man and all the glory of God. The glory of God lies in his amazing condescension in taking the form of man and the glory of man lies in his amazing elevation through perfect obedience to realize in himself the image of God and fulfill his will. Christ, then, is the whole calling of mankind, fulfilled in God, subsisting and powerful in him. It is therefore from Christ alone that we derive the mystery of our creation in God and our purpose, for he is the perfect type of humanity, and he is at the same time the power of our resurrection, our ongoing life, and our perfection to God. This is why Christ counted himself our Alpha and Omega, the perfect expression of the life of God in man. He also counted himself the beginning and the end, that is, the creative power that moves us towards God and brings us to fulfillment in him. And he counted himself the first and the last, that is, the divine, visible model beyond comparison, and anything that came before or after him, perfect in himself, so that we can stand in need of no other, in whom and through whom all things consist. For this reason, if we do not come to know the person of Jesus Christ and become convinced of the surpassing significance of his nature, in which God is perfectly and absolutely united with man, our knowledge of God in relation to our existence and being and the purpose of our life as human beings remains mutilated, incomplete, and unenlightened, totally without joy. Then too, if we do not have faith in the divine powers of Christ, which He bestows on all who believe in Him, so that they are united with Him as He is united with God, our creation remains incomplete, hindered, from its everlasting growth in God through Jesus Christ, handicapped and restricted to the realm of earth.